Welcome to LG Ministry. I'm grateful that you have joined me today to hear another lesson from God's Word. I always strive to present the truth, and I hope the lessons I preach will challenge you to grow as a Christian and will cause you to be uplifted so that you might grow closer to God. So let's dive in and discover the treasures of His teaching together. Welcome back to our series that we're doing on Proverbs. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the cry of wisdom from chapters 8 and chapters 9. As a parent, have you ever found yourself trying to get your children to listen to reason? You tell them to look both ways before crossing the street and not to talk with strangers. We often tell them that if they don't stop doing a certain thing, that this is going to cause them problems. There's going to be consequences uh, for what they're doing. But whatever we said would happen, of course, that usually ends up happening. Solomon talks about wisdom in this same way. Proverbs 8, verse number 1. Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high hill, beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O oh, you simple ones, understand prudence, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. In chapter 7, the immoral woman is portrayed as a seductress who works undercover and is kind of in the darkness. However, in chapter 8, Lady Wisdom is completely opposite of this because she cries out for all to hear. She doesn't hide who or what she is, and she proclaims her message before all at the gates of the city. She never tries to manipulate anyone, and her desire is for people to listen to what she has to say so that they can benefit from the message that she brings. Proverbs 8, verse 6. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things, for my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. When wisdom speaks, it never speaks of perverse things or things that will destroy your life. Instead, it speaks of righteousness and all things that are pleasing to God. Wisdom cannot stand the pathway of wickedness, and it will never allow itself to be associated with the wicked way. When wisdom speaks, we know that it will only present the truth from God's Word. And we can know that those words, they will set us free from our sins. As Jesus said, John 8, verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Her message is clear and easy to understand for those willing to listen and contemplate it. With this in mind, we can know that we never have to worry about wisdom trying to deceive us with vague sayings that no one can interpret with any certainty. Just as parents desire their children to listen to their instructions, wisdom wants us to receive her instructions. She wants us to know that her instructions are far greater than any precious jewels on earth. Therefore, we should First, seek out the instructions of wisdom because they are the greatest treasure that we can find. Proverbs 8, verse number 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. 
Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Wisdom lives with prudence, which means it is skillful at finding knowledge and discretion. This saying in verse 12 reminds me of what Jesus told his disciples when he sent them out on the limited commission. He said, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Matthew 10, verse number 16. When we respect God's way, we will hate what God hates. So we should hate evil and all sin. Paul implies that pride was the devil's downfall in 1 Timothy 3, and verse number 6. And we know he was arrogant enough to think that he could stand against God and win. To speak with perverse mouth includes much more than just speaking profanity or perverted things. It includes all speech that is contrary to God's word, which is another characteristic of the devil because he is the adversary of God and the father of lies, John 8, verse 44. We need to open our eyes to the truth that when we get involved in the way of evil or we approve of those who practice it, we are aligning ourselves with the devil. Imagine him putting his arm around you and saying, good job, my friend. Imagining that should make us shudder. That's basically what happens when we fail to fear the Lord and hate evil. As verses 14 and 15 point out, wisdom provides strength and leadership. Whether they are kings, rulers, princes, nobles, or judges, they can only be successful and make sound judgments by using wisdom. The most successful leaders will allow the wisdom of God to guide them. Also, every successful Christian and leader within the church will be successful if they allow the wisdom of God to guide them as well. As wisdom says, I love those who love me. Those who seek me diligently will find me. Verse 17. Some might read verses 18 through 21 and get the false idea that seeking wisdom and obtaining it guarantees material wealth, but that is not what our text says. It says that having wisdom is the greatest treasure there is. However, it is generally true that those who seek out wisdom first will not only be rich in knowledge and understanding, they will be successful in life, which can equate to material blessings. Those who seek out wisdom first understand that material blessings are just a byproduct. Even when they have material riches, they still understand that wisdom is the greatest treasure and, and they would never give it up for all the riches of the world. As Christians, we must realize that our true treasure, revealed by wisdom, is found in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 19, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You know, we don't want to be like the rich young ruler who loved God enough to follow his commands, but refused to put God before his material wealth, as we read in Matthew 19, verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. How sad it is when one's temporary riches carries more weight than the eternal riches that all faithful Christians will have in heaven. Let's look at our next our next verses in Proverbs 8, verse 22. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of His way. Before His works of old, I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning before there was ever an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. 
while as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primeval dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and my delight was with the sons of men. Now there's some controversy surrounding these verses because some teach that this is referring to Jesus. And we can certainly see similarities to Jesus in our text, but we gotta keep things in context and realize that this is personifying wisdom, not Jesus. Now it shouldn't surprise us that there are many similarities between lady wisdom and deity because we've already seen how wisdom encompasses everything that God stands for. We can see the eternal qualities of wisdom because God possesses it from the beginning of his works before the earth and everything on it was created. Without wisdom, there would be no understanding. Therefore, wisdom has been established from everlasting. Wisdom is seen as being with God while everything is being created. She is called a master craftsman, which means a skilled worker or architect. My God's wisdom, Jesus created the heavens and the earth. John 1 verses 1 through 3, Colossians 1 verses 16 through 17. With our current technology, we have a much better understanding of how precise and complex everything in our universe is. Those who honestly look at the evidence cannot deny that our universe has a creator because there's no way it just came to be from an explosion billions of years ago. Wisdom is also seen as a delight to the Lord and rejoicing in what God has created. Additionally, wisdom delights in us, especially whenever we listen to what she has to say. Proverbs 8, verse 32. Now therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instructions and be wise, and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. While this specifically is talking about Lady Wisdom, we can also see Jesus saying these same things to people today. Those who heed the words of wisdom from the Word of God will bless their souls and will find eternal life. But those who reject it by choosing the pathway of sin will face the worst kind of death, which is spiritual death. In Proverbs chapter 9, Lady Wisdom and Lady Foolish are compared. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Lady Wisdom is well established and is always prepared for a guest. She uses her maidens to continuously invite people to learn from her, and she makes her instructions available for all. She consistently speaks the truth in a way that can benefit anyone that's willing to listen. Her invitation is for the wise and the foolish. And while the wise can become wiser, the foolish have much more to gain because to turn from foolishness will cause them to live before God in a way of righteousness. Much of what is said in these verses is similar to the invitation Jesus taught in the parable of the wedding banquet, Matthew 22, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, Tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, 
And he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. What Jesus said in verse 14 applies to the world in general. For many are called, but few are chosen. Unfortunately, many will hear the call of wisdom and how to be saved, but only a few will listen and make eternal life in heaven their destination. Now, I think part of the reason people refuse to listen to wisdom is because they don't want to change, and they're happy where they are. For example, if you never heard of chocolate, and some guy comes to your community and starts telling you how wonderful chocolate is and how it melts in your mouth, and, and he invites you to come eat some, but you're headed home to eat your favorite meal, you're going to go home instead of trying the chocolate, most likely. Well, you know, I'm sure there'd probably be some that were curious enough, maybe they would give up their favorite meal just to go see what this was about. But like I said, I think most people probably would say, well, I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's any good. I don't know who this person is. I'm just gonna go with the familiar and I'm gonna go home and enjoy my favorite meal. Well, since they don't know, what they're missing, again, is really not that big a deal to them to miss out on the chocolate. Well, this was the same problem the Jews had in the first century. Even though they were looking for a Messiah, they were comfortable with the law of Moses and how they've done things all their lives, just as these previous generations had done. When Jesus came along, he didn't fit their idea of a Messiah, and then he was put to death. And since they were looking for a physical kingdom like it was under Solomon, Many of them had no interest in looking into Jesus and this new covenant. Now, we are creatures of habit, and we like routines. If we're happy with what we're doing and, and how we do it, we have little desire to do anything differently, even if it's better. So we need to keep this in mind when we're trying to reach out to those in the religious world with the truth, because they are usually happy with their way of worship. And they have their friends and family that are there with them, and some of them will find it strange that you're talking to them about Jesus and trying to study with them when they feel like they're already Christians. They would rather you try to use your time to study with those who don't believe. Now, while this is not the only reason it's difficult to reach out to those in the religious world with the truth, it certainly is a significant one because one has to be willing to change from the familiar by submitting to the will of God instead of just going along with the religious group. Every person should compare what is taught and practiced with God's Word. If it lines up, great, but if it doesn't, we should be willing to change so that we can align ourselves with God instead of man. Next we read in Proverbs 9 verse 7, He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. Give instructions to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and years of your life will be added to you. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself, and if you scoff, you will bear it alone. Those who don't care about God or righteousness will not heed anything wisdom offers them. We would be better off at rebuking a brick wall. You know, it's a shame that some are so stubborn that they won't listen to wisdom and allow wisdom to change their lives for the better. But there are many like this. Paul gives us similar instructions in Titus 3 verse 10. Reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. In contrast, the wise are willing to learn more because they understand that there is much to learn and that the more wisdom that we have, the better off we will be. Again, the beginning point of fulfilling the purpose of Proverbs is stated in verse 10. 
which is the fear of the Lord. As verse 12 points out, we are to stand on our own merit. No one gets us to heaven on their merit or causes us to taste the flames of hell because of their sinfulness. We must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of how we have lived our lives. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he's done, whether good or bad. And so we have to remember that each of us had to face the consequences of our own actions. Now let's look at Proverbs 9 verse 13. A foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple and knows nothing. For she sits at the door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city to call to those who pass by who go straight on their way. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And as for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of hell. Lady Foolishness is pictured as a loud, boisterous woman who cares nothing about wisdom. She also offers her invitation to all who will listen. She is on the devil's side and wants to lead as many people as possible to him. She uses temptation and empty promises to lure the foolish to her. She tries to convince people that indulging in sin will bring you more pleasure and satisfaction. Like a mouse that goes for the cheese in a mousetrap, the foolish will discover that they have been deceived and that they are now in the devil's trap. Obviously, we should clamor for Lady Wisdom's way because she offers us truth, happiness, and a home in heaven, while Lady Foolishness offers us lies, temporary pleasures, and a home in hell. Lady Wisdom cries out to us daily. She wants us to hear the simple truth, and she will never deceive us. She is eternal and part of God, and He has shared her with us through the Bible. We must be willing to learn from her and listen to what she has to say daily. Our priority should include time for reading and reflecting on God's Word. We must not be like Martha, who was so distracted by the daily task that she missed out on the wisdom that Jesus taught. Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. We should make it our goal to put foolishness and childish things behind us. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. We should approach each day as an opportunity to gain more wisdom so we can learn how to avoid the devil's snare. So let us keep our minds on the eternal rewards that we can enjoy from listening to and understanding the wisdom that God offers us through His Word. So always seek out wisdom. I appreciate you listening to my lesson and I hope you found it to be biblical and I hope it challenged you in some way. I would even be happy if it just made you think about your life or about God. I think it's important that we listen to and study God's Word as often as we can. Now one thing I want to make clear is that I don't want you to treat my Word as if it's the Word of God. I say this because I'm just a man. However, I will always do my best to study God's Word and to teach the truth. But I can make mistakes just like anyone else can. So always go to God's Word to confirm what I am teaching. We all need to be good Bereans. If you find that I'm preaching something wrong, please let me know and be ready to show me from Scripture where I got it wrong. Because as a teacher of God, I know that I'll be judged with a harsher judgment by God. James 3, verse number 1. I would also greatly appreciate it if you would tell people about LG Ministry. You can find all my videos on YouTube. Just search by my name or search by LG Ministry and you should easily find the channel or you can go to lgministry.org. Our lessons are seen by people all over the world, so I hope you'll continue to watch our program and pray that we'll be able to plant God's Word for many years to come.